I've never really been the type to finish a sketchbook. You see, I can be a procrastinator. I only tended to finish sketchbooks maybe once a year? Until I did. For the first time ever. 24 pages in one month. I was so shocked with my progress, I decided that I would challenge myself. 100 pages in one week. That's about 15 pages a day. Work on all the weaknesses I have been procrastinating on for, well, years. And see how much improvement I could essentially speedrun and show you how it all went. But before I could begin my training arc, I needed to see where I was at and make a baseline, so to speak. As a person that has learned much of my anatomy through random tips on Pinterest, I definitely have gaps in knowledge. Here are all the things I thought I could learn within a week, and the rules that I set upon myself. As you can probably tell, my construction of the body from memory tended to be stiff and had some awkward angles due to my lack of knowledge. But since the power of anatomy tips literally carried me up to this point, I will be sharing what I found useful in my journey and which concepts I think are better learned through photo studies rather than tutorials. Because just as in the case of any self-taught artist, it's hard to know what you need to know and I feel like I ended up wasting precious hours of my life learning certain things. Day 2 begins with the face. Study the mouth in movement rather than in one spot. If you only want to draw the mouth in this position, then go ahead. But know that it will all be useless once you start to make the mouth move or talk. I spent like 2 hours learning how to shade these lips and took even really pretty notes to make a tutorial of it in case I wanted to refer back to it. Honestly, I was a little disappointed with the waste of time because I was much more interested in learning how to make better expressions. But I found that mouths are actually kind of easy in that they can make so many shapes that you can just kind of make it up. Take the basic smile, Squish and stretch it in one or the other direction, and bam, it's mouths. Teeth. I feel like I unlocked a lot of expressions when I learned about teeth, and it was much easier to learn than I thought it was. Basically, you start in the middle and go two teeth to the right, add a canine, and the rest turns through perspective. Erase the line so it's not so creepy. Repeat. Teeth. I've heard that knowing the skeleton and the skull is actually really good for improvement. The only problem is I haven't felt the benefits of it myself yet. I guess I wasn't able to make the connection because I found it easier to study artists I like and kind of steal their proportions instead. In my rating, I think that you can kind of survive without skulls but try it out because it might end up helping you and you might be able to make the connection. Also, expressions are easier than I thought. So you kind of just think about the expression and then think about which facial feature you're going to use, eyes, nose, eyebrows, make it go up or down, and then repeat on the other side and bam, emotions. We begin the day with the beloved Proko. Proko is amazing and the fact that he gives away so much for free on YouTube is doubly amazing. But with a time crunch and my arm hurting, it's hard to know what you need to know and what you don't. And Proko is very detailed. Do I need to know the names of the muscles of the deltoid and what ligament holds them together? Or do I just need to know their shapes? Now, what I haven't been mentioning is that 15 pages a day was actually really straining my arm. Keep in mind, I am not used to drawing that much in a day, and my setup for drawing was not ergonomic. Like, at all. Probably one of the worst parts is I had to record in a flat lay position. 
While I was learning quite a lot, the time it was taking was also much more than I expected, and it could take me more than half a day to fill up the pages with studies. I made sure to take breaks in between and stretch my arm and hands, but by day three, I was feeling the warning signs of burnout. But thanks to the recent feelings of accomplishment, I figured I could manage, since this would only be for a week, right? Wrong. What I didn't know is that learning the arm would probably be the hardest challenge of my life. You think I'm joking. I have an interest in anatomy, and if I could have it my way, I would have attempted to memorize the whole human body, skeleton up, from memory. And I think that's the reason why I was so persistent on learning how to draw arms in a way that I could be able to construct it from any angle muscles and all. The arm has so many muscles and ways to move. It bends, twists, rotates, and the wrist area is confusing on a good day. After many pages of learning the muscles in the arm, I was mad at the amount of hours I felt like I was wasting on learning arm anatomy only for me to still not get it. I also wasn't sure why I wasn't understanding it. I remember wondering if I should just give up at this point. I was really fatigued, my eyes were burning, my arm was in pain, and there was just nothing I could understand. I kept redrawing the concepts to see if I could understand it, but I just couldn't memorize where the muscles went, let alone what those muscles even were. By page 44, my right arm couldn't draw anymore without feeling the strain out to my elbow. It's a pain that I felt before, especially when I was a student, which is dangerous because it can turn out into a repetitive strain injury. Though at this point, I was starting to figure out how the muscles attach to each other, I still couldn't understand the structure. That was until I found this Bridgman-like concept from a David Finch video. The arm is a chain. And one of the reasons it was so difficult for me to understand the arm was because the different muscles face different directions. With this epiphany, at like 3am, things finally started to make more sense. And there was a little ray of hope that made me feel like maybe I'm not as bad of an artist as I thought. Maybe I could learn how to draw arms. So with one last push, I took note of this concept and knocked out for the night. Alright, so my arm was hurting from my wrist to my elbow when I would draw, but you know my brain ended up being so persistent on understanding the subject of arms that after a night's rest of sleep, I woke up to feeling like the information had finally sunk in. So even though I thought I should be crying from the thought of drawing another arm, I ended up testing the concept again, for like 7 pages straight, just combining the knowledge of structure and details of the muscles. It was a little exhilarating to finally understand something that I tried so hard to understand yesterday. In retrospect, the concept of arms took way too long to know, especially knowing that it could be simplified in two to three shapes. Actually, you wouldn't even be able to see most of these muscles unless the person was a bodybuilder. So here is what I would do to simplify and learn the arm. Understand that the arm is a chain, Study the Bridgman method. Pictures with highlighted parts rather than a video because the arm rotates anyways. And you don't need to know every muscle. If it's scary, just know the big shapes. When I feel like I finally strong armed my way out of that concept, I happily moved on to the back, which can basically be simplified as a butterfly or maybe a stingray. The traps shoot towards the delts and downwards the spine. On a very muscular person, there might even be an indent where the muscles attach. Shoulder blades can be visible on many body types, and the rest of the muscles flow towards the crack except for the obliques. Day 5 Okay, so I thought the arm nightmare was going to repeat again, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that legs are easier than I thought. I actually quite like Proko's tutorial and I learned even more about the importance of counterbalances throughout the body. I won't go into every detail about how to draw legs nor all of their muscles, but I will say that these are tips that I keep with me especially if I want to draw more than a basic leg. After you get the general direction of where you'd like it to go, remember, 
there is a long muscle called the sartorius that attaches from the outer hip to the inner knee, and another muscle that creates a triangle with it for the quads. There are counterbalances throughout the whole body, including the ankles, where the inner ankle is higher than the outer ankle. The kneecap is a hard box, or stone, that you have to pay attention to where it will point. The calf can be like a heart, slightly tilted, since the counterbalances thing we talked about. And then as I've been mentioning throughout these tutorials, remember you don't have to memorize all of these muscles unless you are going to draw someone who is very muscular. In that sense, I would suggest that you just use picture references of a bodybuilder. By day 6, I was feeling encouraged again. Almost like day 1. I suppose it was also because I have already gotten so far through the challenge when a few days ago, I almost gave up. This time, I tried to practice bodies again, without reference, and hopefully you can see that my bodies flow much more and are slightly more dynamic, especially versus day 1. While I still needed to work on making more natural poses, I was still much more confident on where certain muscles would be. This day was also one of my favorites since I finally unlocked the art world's mystery item. Hands. If you want to impress anyone, including yourself, and just be really cool in the art community in general while also unlocking the skill of better expressions, invest into learning hands. While I do want to make a tutorial on this in the future, I would highly recommend Cynic's quick anatomy tips on hands and Procro's tutorial afterwards. Make sure you learn what the proportions of the hand are, the fact that everything is curved from the knuckles to the fingers, hand tendencies such as how the fingers curl with each other, how the wrist hinges, and if you want a bonus, also how to draw knuckles. As for feet, also remember that there is a natural foot arch. Your big toe is in the inside of your foot, not the outside. Toes are staircases and the ankle actually sticks out of the back. It's not straight down from the calf. The last day. I squeezed in one more concept to learn, which is David Finch's video on foreshortening. Highly recommend. Throughout this challenge, I have been looking through a lot of YouTube videos. I would say that I prefer Cynix's videos the most since Cynix wouldn't just show how to draw the body part in one position, but tips on how to draw it in various angles, which I find pretty rare for art tutorials. David Finch would also be a great one to follow after Cynix if you still didn't understand the concept. Then Proko for maybe when you really want to go into bone structure and certain muscles. I also remember liking Cycra's video on mouths since it covers how to draw them when they are open and how to draw teeth. And then I also remember liking Toniko Pantoja's video on expressions. I'm sorry if I mispronounced most, if not all of those artists names wrong. So hopefully with the help of these videos, you are also able to see that I finally learned to have more confidence on how to draw certain parts of the body especially including feet and hands. One of the biggest things I see the improvement on is expressions. I think before I just never really studied them and I never um, tried hard enough to make them, but with just one short video and a short study on it, I was able to improve a lot in this matter. I'm actually really happy about that because I feel like it will unlock a lot more storytelling in my art and I hope that I'll be able to use it more in the future instead of just the handsome dead face type of look. While my construction of the body is definitely not perfect, I have much more knowledge than I did before about anatomy, which makes me more comfortable in drawing it and allows me to get much more out of my references. You know? I couldn't believe I made it through this challenge. From 24 pages in a month to 15 pages in a day to my arm having pain, I decided to just redraw everything that I drew on the first day and compare it side to side without reference. Hopefully, now you can see that I have much more options in what I can draw and in what angle. I also have a newfound appreciation for those people who can just finish sketchbooks like it's nothing. I learned a lot from this challenge. I pushed my boundaries, I crammed a ton of information, and I have valuable notes that are especially tailored to me. Would I recommend other people to take the challenge of 100 pages in a week? No. 
especially to artlings. Because if you're just a youngling in terms of drawing and don't already have the habits of an artist that can draw for endurance, you can seriously damage yourself and your passion for drawing. I ended up pushing it because we were in the middle of moving and I didn't really have an ergonomic setup at all. But I know other professionals and hobbyists with permanent arm damage from drawing too much or too long. So when my arms started to hurt, I knew how to take breaks, stretch, and I rested a lot after this challenge. What you can do is to set a challenge to learn things you want to learn without a page requirement. That way, you can actually learn what you want to learn without added pressure or possible injury. If there is nothing you will take away, please just remember this. Your weaknesses are worth strengthening, especially if it's something that you've always wanted to draw. You will open up new worlds and levels in your art and you will feel so accomplished that you can draw the thing you've always wanted to. The short time you spend learning will be information that will serve you for the rest of your art career. If you're still here, you're really epic and deserve some bubble tea. I hope that you found something useful in this video and I'll see you in the next art venture.